The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. <laughs> You know, Ethelbert, you and I have a good chance to be famous. How's that, Casey? Well, I figure if a man's known by the company he keeps... Yeah? Then he ought to be known by the company that keeps him. That makes sense. And the company that keeps us is... Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Photo of the Dead. Nine o'clock in the evening, the big, untidy photographer's room of the Morning Express. The door opens, and Ann Williams. Gosh, it's hot, Casey. Let's go over to the Blue Note. Oh, Annie, I'd like to get out of this joint for a while, but uh, Dad Phelan phoned about half an hour ago and said he wanted to see me. He's making a special trip down here. Dad Phelan? Sure, you met him. He runs a little stationery and cigar store Oh, yes, of course. He lost his wife last year, and he went to her funeral. Yeah, Aunt Maggie, your name was. Well, what does he want to see you about? Well, he said he wanted my advice about something. What? He didn't say... Well, there he is now. Hi, Dad. Oh, Casey, my boy. Hey, it's good to see you, It's Dad. always good to see you. You remember Annie Williams, don't you? Oh, of course. How are you, Miss Williams? Just fine, Mr. Phelan. Now, sit down, Dad. Thanks. Uh, I've got something to tell you, boy. Oh, what's on your mind? Casey, I've heard from Maggie. Uh, huh? She's come back to me from the dead. Mr. Phelan. I've heard her voice, uh, and she sent me her picture from the other world. Her picture. Boy, you know that after Maggie died, well, we'd been together for nearly 50 years, and I didn't know what to do with myself. I know. So I started to read books that told how the the dead sometimes are able to communicate with the living. Books on psychic phenomena? Uh, Yes, Miss Williams. There's a bookshop on 12th Street, Jameson's, that has a lot of those books. Yeah, I've passed it. Yeah, a very nice lady runs it. I went in there a lot. We got acquainted, and... One day she told me about a man. A man with remarkable powers. Uh, so you went to him? Yeah. And last Thursday night, a week ago, boy, Maggie spoke to me while I was there. Uh, what did this man charge you? He wouldn't take a penny. Huh? Here, Casey. Look at this picture. You see what had happened? Above my right shoulder. Well, there's a ghostly face of a woman, Casey. Yeah. And it's Maggie's face. You recognize it, boy? Yes, yes. Uh, Casey... This picture couldn't have been made by by a trick, could it? Maggie was really with me last night, wasn't she? Yes, sure she was with you, Dad. The, the photo's not a fake? You'd no. know. No, it's it's not a fake. Oh, so glad to hear you say that. Okay. Oh, hold it, Annie. Say, Dad, what's the name of this uh, this man who took this shot? Well, uh, it's kind of a funny name. Uh, Fader Narsi, he... He's an East Indian fellow. He's one of those swamis, huh? He's a fine man. Oh, I'm sure of that. Where does he live? Well, he has a big house on Rankin Avenue, 142. Uh, why? Well, I just wondered. Oh, excuse me, Dan. Yeah. Hello, Casey speaking. Yeah. Okay, Burke, I'll be right up. That was City Desk calling, Dan. I'm sorry, I've got to rush up. Uh, go right ahead, boy. I'll be going. Anyway, you've told me what I wanted to know, and... You've made me very happy. Well, I'm very glad. Uh, good night, Miss Williams. Good night, Mr. Phelan. Uh, good night to you, boy. And a million thanks. Good night, Dad. Casey, that photograph can't be on the left. Of course it isn't. It's a crude double exposure. That ghost face was taken from an old picture of Aunt Maggie that this Fader Narcy fellow got hold of somewhere. Well, why didn't you tell the old man that? Oh, Annie, how could I? Dad wants to believe that this thing's on the level. He, he's happy tonight for the first time since his wife died. But, Annie, after I finish whatever assignment Burke has for me upstairs, I'm going to pay an unsocial call on Swami Fader Narsi. (laughs) 
Oh, hey, Bert, what do you mean? You're sending me out of town tonight? That's what I said, Casey. I just had our Detroit correspondent on the phone. He tells me a honey of a murder broke out there. You may be gone two weeks, maybe a month. And I'm not going? Casey's on this job alone, Williams. You stay here. Now, take this to the cashier and get your expense money, oh. Casey. Your train leaves in 45 minutes. Burke, I ought to see a guy tonight. Here. You can't. Get going, Casey. I want pictures from Detroit tomorrow. Uh, oh, okay. Well, Dad Phelan's been looking after himself for over 70 years. I guess he can do it without my help a few weeks longer. <laughs> Hello. Miss Williams? Yes. This is long distance. I have your call through to Detroit. Oh, thank you. Go ahead, please. Hello. Hello, Casey. Annie, gee, it's great to hear your voice. Anyway, what's up? Look, what's up? Uh, something's happened that we think you ought to know about. Ah, uh, what? I'm at police headquarters with Captain Logan. A few hours ago, your friend, Dad Phelan, was found dead. Dad Phelan? Yes, Casey. And Captain Logan thinks that Swami Feda Nazi was responsible for his death. <laughs> Come on, Logan, let's have the dope on it. Well, Phelan didn't open his store this morning, Casey. A cop on the beat got worried, broke in, and found your friend dead in the back room. He just died in his sleep, huh? Yeah. I talked to Miss Williams after she phoned you, Casey, and we pieced the thing together. Beside the old man's body was that spirit photograph of him and his wife. And in his pocket, we found a bank book that had apparently represented his life savings. Balance was only $21. Yes. But until four days after Miss Williams says he called on you with the express, the balance had been $6,021. Uh, the fake Swami got the 6000 Yeah. And the shock of losing his life savings and learning that the Swami was a fake was too much for him. The Swami gave him the usual routine. Huh? Yeah, racketeers of his type are all alike. After the victim is convinced he's in contact with the dead, he gets a spook message telling him to hand over some money, usually for an investment the ghost recommends. The dough was passed over in cash, and we cops can't do a thing. Logan, that swami killed that old man just as surely as though he'd stuck a gun at his head and pulled the trigger. I know it, but he's not a murderer in the eyes of the law. We can't even prove him a thief. Are you questioning him? Naturally. He denied everything. Well, Logan... I'll talk to Swami Feta Narsi. It won't get you anywhere. Well, I'll see you later. Now, what are you going to do? Well, from what you say, there's only one thing I can do. Beat that guy to a pulp. Good afternoon. Are you Feta Narsi? No, sir. Oh, just a servant, eh? Yes, well, sir. I want to see your boss. What is your name? Casey. You have appointment with the master? No. Fader Narsi received no visitor except by appointment. Well, he received me, big guy. Get out of my way. Wait. Nobody pass Luki. Luki. Yes, master. I will see the gentleman for a moment. What is it you wish, Mr. Casey? So you are. I am Fader Narsi. What do you wish? Hasn't your crystal ball told you? As the police have made some baseless insinuations that cannot be proven, I imagine you were about to do something equally foolish. Yeah. I'm going to knock that grin off your face and your teeth along with okay. it. Yes, sir. Take your hands off of me. Let me go, will you? Lukey, my devoted servant is a Senegalese. Uh, they are noted for their skill in fighting. Uh, Lukey, teach Mr. Casey that it will be very unwise for him to trouble us again. It will be a pleasure, sir. Splendid, Lukey. Now pick Mr. Casey up from where he's fallen and throw him out the door. <laughs> Our story will continue in just a moment. Here's a bargain, a real bargain. A big nine and a half inch pie plate made of beautiful Fire King oven glass. Guaranteed for two years against oven breakage. Its highly polished surface is as smooth as a mirror, comes clean almost instantly. It's as attractive on your table as it is sturdy and practical in your kitchen. And here's the most important point of all. This new kind of Fire King pie plate 
practically assures results every time. Its pale blue glass absorbs oven heat so evenly that your pies bake all the way through. The crust is light and flaky with no danger of scorching. Now, to get this new pie plate, it's not necessary to sit down and write a letter. Simply go to your favorite five and ten cent store or any other store selling household glass and ask for the special Fire King oven glass pie plate being offered over the air at 25 cents or slightly more in distant cities. Remember the name, Fire King Oven Glass. This new Fire King Oven Glass pie plate is a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. You're certainly a pretty picture, Casey. Two black eyes, a lump on your jaw. You don't have to give me a bruise-by-bruise bruise description of how I look, Ethelbert. I know Ethelbert, how I Ethelbert, that big Senegalese prize fighter might have killed him. Oh. I know how you feel, pal, but you've gone at this thing all wrong. Rough stuff will get you nowhere. That's great. You got any suggestions? Uh, no. Captain Logan says there's nothing he can do, huh? What can the cops do unless they can prove that Nazi got Mr. Phelan's money and got it under false pretense? Must be some way to get evidence. Why doesn't Logan detail one of his dicks to pose as a sucker and pass this Nazi a couple of marked bills? Well, that's been tried several times, but Nazi's too wise. Casey, huh? I might be able to get the goods on Fata Nazi. But you? Yeah. No one would ever take me for a cop. I could go to Nazi and tell him I'd lost a, a sister, for instance. And I'd let him believe that I had some money, and he'd work his racket on me, and then I'd pass him marked bills, and we'd have him. Sure, it'd be a cinch, Casey. Oh, yeah. It'd be a complete bust, that's oh, what it'd why? be. Oh, now, why? Do you think anybody gets into Narzi's joint unless he knows who they are and all about them, Annie? You see, it's part of his racket to have the lowdown on people who come to him. Oh, you mean he'd look me up and find out I'm Ann Williams, who works for the Morning Express? Yeah, he sure would. Say, wait a minute. I've got an idea. Hmm? What? Burke was telling me some of his recent family history a few days before I went to Detroit. He can give us the gimmick we need behind this thing. Burke? You're sitting at it? Yeah. Boy, and will he do it when he sees it as the build-up for an exclusive feature story? Annie, come on. We're talking to Burke right now. You're right, Casey. It's a natural... Williams, you'll check into an uptown hotel here tomorrow night as Marilyn Phillips of Portland, Oregon. Which is the real name and home address of your wife's first cousin, right? Yes, as Casey remembered my telling him, Marilyn lost her mother several months ago. Where's Miss Phillips now, though, Bert? Traveling in Mexico, so that'll be all right. She's about your size and coloring, Williams. I'll have my wife tell you enough about Marilyn Phillips tonight so that you can borrow her identity without any chance of a slip-up. When this fade on Arcee checks her, he'll think you're the real McCoy. Well, how will I get to Nazi? I can't just walk up to his front you door. You get to him the same way Dad Phelan did. You go to Jameson's occult bookshop and become a steady customer. The old dame who runs the place is probably a shill for Nazi. Oh, I get it. I pose as a grief-stricken daughter with, with money and let her and him do the rest. That's the play. After you check into the hotel as Marilyn Phillips, you're not to come near this office, near your apartment... Or with anyone you know, till this job's finished. Uh, wait a minute now, Burke, you mean... Uh... I mean especially that she can't go anywhere near you, Casey. That'd give the whole show away. Oh, I didn't think of that. I'll see that you receive plenty of expense money, Williams. You report to me by phone. That's all. Uh, she, she can talk to me by phone, too. Well, what does she want to talk to you for? Yes, why should I? Well, I thought I might be able to help or something. Burke. We'll attend to everything. Sure, Casey. I'll attend to everything. Oh, that's just swell. Good it is. Burke speaking. Uh, it's me, Burke. I'm getting acquainted with Mrs. Jameson, but she hasn't suggested I see our man yet. You've only been on the job ten days. This will take time. Stick with it. <laughs> Casey, what on earth has happened to Miss Williams? It's almost three weeks since I've seen her in here. And Miss I... Williams is away, Ethelbert. And who cares? Hey, you don't have to bite my head off. You've been coming in here for over a month now, Miss Phillips. 
I feel that I know you well enough to offer a suggestion that may soften your great sorrow. Well, the only thing that can help me, Mrs. Jameson, is if I could see my mother again or hear her voice. Well, perhaps you can. I know a remarkable man, Miss Phillips. A man of almost miraculous powers. His name is Theta Narsen. Sit down, Miss Phillips. Oh, thank you. Uh, I see things in the crystal ball. I see a lady there whom you loved very dearly. My mother? Yes. Her name was Alice. The woman who sent me here must have told you that. Be not hasty in your judgment, Miss Phillips. You were born October 4th, 1922. Your home was 47 Vista Road, Portland, Oregon. Your middle name is Celestine. Your mother's maiden name was McClintic. She's very close to you now, Miss Phillips. Very close. Can you make me see her, Swami? Or hear her voice? Later, perhaps. Come to me on Thursday next. In the meantime, I will pray that the one you love beyond the veil will speak to you and give you comfort. Go now. I'm very weary. Yes, Swami. Uh, what, um, uh, how much do I owe you? Owe me? Hmm. Oh, my dear child, I make no charge for my services, ever. My mission in life is to serve mankind. Oh, he merely gave you the old build-up today. Yes, Burke. Of course, someone in Portland sent him the information about Marilyn Phillips and her mother. Oh, Burge and his racket have contacts all over. Call me again after you see him Thursday. Goodbye. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Burke. Huh? How, uh, how's Casey? In very bad humor. Goodbye. It's very still, Miss Phillips. The psychic force is strong in me tonight. I feel the spirit presence of one who has passed beyond. You uh, think, Swami, that my mother... I my... cannot tell. I am sinking into trance. Hold my hands tightly. Look closely at the crystal, and soon you may hear the voice of the dead. It's so dark in here. Trance. I'm sinking into... Oh. Swami. What? That knocking. Something's knocking on the table, Swami, and it isn't you. Oh, it... that music. Where's it coming from? I'm afraid, Swami. I'm afraid. Have no fear, my daughter. That voice. It is your mother's darling. Mother? I'm with you, Marilyn, here. This good man has helped me make the journey from the land beyond to bring you comfort. I can't see you, Mother. I have more to tell you, my dear. Now the force is growing weak. Trust this good man. Trust Veda Narsi, and I will come to you again through him. Come again, and I will have more to tell you. Oh. Swami Narsi. Swami Narsi. Was it a success, Miss Phillips? Oh, you, you don't know what happened? I was in trance. I never know. My mother talked to me. She said that she had more to tell me. We shall assist her then. Come to me next Wednesday. Hold my hands tightly, Miss Phillips. Yes, Swami. I am sinking into trance. Sinking into... Those knocks. And that, 
that music again. I... Uh, mother? Yes, my darling. Come, come closer and let me really see you. That is beyond my power, dear. I have but little time. I'm so worried about you, my child. Worried about me? I left you so little money when I passed behind the veil. You must have more, much more, and you shall have it. I will point the way. Tomorrow, take your money from the bank. Take my money from the bank? Give it to this good man, faded Narcy. He will invest it for you. Invest it so it will be doubled, tripled in amount. When that is done, your mother will be happy. You, uh, you will tell Fade and Nancy how to invest my money, Mother? I shall guide his every action. And I know all things, dear. Through him, I will make you rich. Promise, darling. Yes. Mother, yes. I'll bring Tommy Nazi the money tomorrow. Oh, you made me very happy. I must leave you now, darling. I must go. So, oh, then the ghost voice faded out, huh? Uh, yes, Burke. And when Nazi snapped out of his trance... I told him I'd bring him $10,000 that Mother left me at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. I'll send you the money by a messenger. Call me when you get it, and we'll check on the final plan. Okay, Berg. Goodbye. Well, Casey, tomorrow night will be the payoff. Yeah? Cops will be posted around the house before Williams goes in. When she comes out, the cops will take it as a signal, close in, get the swami with those marked bills in his possession, and that's that. There's also going to be a witness when that money is passed. Who? Me. Why, you're the last guy in the world who could get into that house. I've been casing that joint, Burke. There's a big window in Narcy's chamber with a strong trellis leading up to it. The window is painted black inside, but if Anne can get it open just a few inches... You could see and hear what's going on. And I can take a picture of Anne giving that rat the dough. I'll use an infrared bulb that shows no glare. It'll make a swell shot for the paper. And for evidence in court, will you tell Anne to get that window open? I certainly will. Leave it to Williams... She'll get it open somehow. I've brought the money, Swami. Oh, yes, yes, the money. You'll return it to me and much more besides, as Mother said. Miss Phillips, through spirit guidance, I have made many fortunes for other people. I'm not interested in money myself. Oh, there's um, $10,000 here. All I have. Well, I, I will accept and invest it as a sacred trust. Here. Thank you. What was that? I, I didn't hear anything. We'll see. This window. So, Mr. Casey. <gasps> Hello, Nazi. Step off that trellis and into this room with your camera. As you see, I have a gun. Yes, I see. Now close the window. Okay. I am always alert for frame-ups. Yes, the guy in your racket has to be. You will give me the film you just exposed? What good will it do you? I saw you take the dough. Your testimony and that of Miss uh, Phillips will be utterly valueless if the money cannot be found in my possession. It's quite obvious that I have been given marked bills, but they're easily destroyed. Casey, if he destroys the papers, $10,000, I'll have to pay it back. I'll be in debt the rest of my life. He won't destroy it. Don't move, Mr. Casey. I shoot. Now take the film from your camera and toss it into the copper bowl on this table. Okay. I place your marked money in the bowl with it. Now strike a match, Mr. Casey, and burn them. That gun makes you the boss. Oh, Casey, when we tell Burke you burn the papers, money... It is very probable that you will not be believed. There will be a large suspicion that you kept it for yourself. That doesn't bother me so much as the idea that you might beat this rap, Nazi. I shall beat it. Now strike a match and burn that evidence. Okay. Money and the film in this bowl beside your crystal ball. Oh, you... Right at you, Nazi. Knock the gun out of his hand. Get it, Annie, quick. Lookie, Lookie. Yes, that's that's that big prize fighter. Come here, Lookie, help. That's the guy I want to see again. Take this gun. You'll need it. Keep no, it. I won't. Lookie. I am here, master. Hey. Ah. You weren't expecting that crystal ball in your face, were you? Ah, 
Now, that'll hold you. Now, Swami Nazi, would you like to gaze into your crystal ball? Or can you guess what's going to happen? Don't hit me. Don't hit me. This is yes. for Dad Phelan. This for Annie. This one's for me. And now, Annie, you can bring in the cops. <laughs> We'll join the crowd at the Blue Note in just a moment. No wonder the new Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle is sweeping America. Think of all the extras it brings you at no extra cost. Extra number one. It requires no deposit. No bother with pennies. Extra number two. You don't have to return it. No trouble with empties. Extra number three. It's light as a feather, easy to carry, unnatural for picnics. Extra number four. It's sturdy and compact. Save space in the icebox. Extra number five. It's easy to open, safe to drink from. Extra number six. It's at home on any table. Extra number seven. And brother, what flavor, that true brewery flavor that only glass can bring you. Yes, here's the bottle that makes beer and ale easy to enjoy. The Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle. For flavor that's brewery bright, demand beer in bottles. For safety and convenience, Demand your favorite brand in the new Anchor Glass one-way, no-deposit bottle. Product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Cops got the whole gang of them, huh, Casey? Yes, Ethelbert. Mm -hmm, including Mrs. Jameson, the dame who also impersonated Narzi's spook. That's swell, Miss Williams. And it's swell to see you around here again. I've missed you since you've been away on that case. Oh, thanks, Ethelbert. Yeah, that's right. We've all... Uh, say, Annie, it's, it's uh, kind of a nice night. Uh, how about you and me taking a walk? Why? Uh, hmm? Well, just because it's uh, <laughs> kind of a nice night. So long, Ethelbert. Uh, so long, Ethelbert. So long, Ethel... Uh, so long. <sighs> As my sister Edna says, quote, absence makes the brain grow dumber, and a walk on a nice night may be dangerous business for an unmarried bachelor, uh, unquote. Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. <laughs> Photographer is directed by John Deese. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town. So stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>